Good uh, afternoon. No, it's not even evening yet, really, is it? Good evening, every, everybody. Welcome uh, back to the weekly Armchair Sports Talk. Uh, Fuak here. Now, that was uh, close, really, wasn't it? I mean, we, we were absolutely dreadful that whole game. We were talking a little bit backstage um, and lucky to come out with the three points. But as, as Jamie sort of said, uh, you know, four points in two games back to back against you know a, a, you know a rough match you could see that in the first 10 minutes nothing could get settled uh but yeah three points uh sitting in second and hopefully our um neighbors won't get a result today and that would be uh, absolutely wonderful but we have obviously played two games more uh keen thanks for joining me buddy good to have you on again my man i hope you're well uh talk to me about how you're feeling i was pissed off at that first, uh, first half just like i think just lack of creativity, I think that 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 really um stifled me in that first half. But look, second half was a lot better. We got up the pitch. I think Ten Hag's substitutions paid dividends um to get the three points today. I think change of shape, Red Horse dropping into number ten, Bruno going out yeah, to the right. Really well actually, didn't they? We'll talk about that for sure. Yeah, I think like it uh it really helped the shape and then just want to mention see that little prick ransom band, see that prick Saeed, see the both of them. They can both hold that smoke. They, they, two of them can seriously shove that up their arse. Honest to God. That's all I have to say about that. Yeah, fair points. And uh, absolutely, uh, we won't obviously give them any sort of airtime at all. Uh, absolute crock of shit is all I'm going to say. Uh, Jarvis in the comments, uh, get in there three points. And that is fundamentally what it's all about. And uh, Celtic game, but Ten Hag knew what to do. You know what? I, um, I, I obviously... You, you know how much I, I wind on about it every week. I, I've got a lot of time and, and respect and, and think he's doing some wonderful things. But I really feel like he potentially made a mistake today, perhaps with the starting lineup. And I think that the changes did make it in the end and, and probably got us over the line. But um, it, I, I don't think it was his best day today. But anyway, Jamie, before we go into that a little bit more, uh, tell me about how you're feeling, buddy. Yeah, like we were saying backstage, you know, the results are all that matters in the end. Um performances usually like, like bad performances you know don't really live long in the memory that much as long as you get the three points and at the end of the season we won't really talk about how bad we were but you know again we've had a scoreline flatter us a little bit um we were poor for 80 minutes of that game and I agree with you. I think I think the starting 11 was probably wrong um but it signals to me that this could be the end of some players time at Manchester United um you know and I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about that and people can well, well, yes. who, who do you think? Yeah, go on. Who do you think? I think Harry Maguire's done. Um, you know, I think we've all wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt at times. And it's one of those things of going, you know, if we can ease him back into the, to the starting 11, maybe he has a bit of a role to play here. But he just doesn't have the skill set to play in this Eric Ten Hag side. And I want yeah, him to I be agree. able to salvage um, his career. And I want him to, yeah. to go somewhere and rebuild himself, get his confidence. But he needs to go back to playing... Um, you know, in a in a team that that likes to defend, you know, let him let him tackle, let him um, hold people off the ball, and let him do what he's what he's good at. But playing in a uh, high line defence with this team just doesn't seem to work for him at the minute. Um, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him gone in the summer. And I think David de Gea, I think de Gea is uh, is fast approaching his cut off point now. I know obviously he splits opinion in the fan base. Um, you'll have some people that will completely defend him because he's made some really important saves for us, and yeah, no one's yeah. discrediting that. Yeah. The problem is, is that this this Eric Ten Hag vision that he has of how we operate in the first phase of attack is Doesn't not going to happen that, while De Gea is playing for this club. We saw it this game, and we were so so poor in that first phase, so many times, and it was just De Gea would pass the ball out to Maguire, Maguire would pass the ball to Shaw. You know, it'd go back to De Gea, who then hoof it up, and it'd either be just recycled and brought back at us, or it'd go out for a throw in. Um, so yeah, I think we were poor in transition. Um, but obviously that changed with the the tactical tweaks that Ten Hag made. Martinez, man, like th that man is just is, is, is different gravy. Do you know what I mean? Like the fact that one player can make so much difference, and he and he did. You know, don't get it twisted. Like he he made all the difference um, when it came to progressing the ball across the halfway line. He breaks the lines really well with his passing. Um, he he's a and to be fair, you know, it wasn't even one of his most aggressive games. He didn't really seem to have that much defending to do when he came on. Um, it was more about how he affected us in in that first phase of build-up play. Um, and I agree with Keane, you know, dropping Beghorst into the 10 um, and allowing him just to maybe win the ball. And and, and that's what created the goals for us, you know, um, having that ball-winning ability. And then the only other thing that I'll touch on before we obviously move on is um, I, I've seen some people being critical of Fred again. 
uh, not not the artist who was obviously he was nominated for a Brit a Brit award. Um, Love Fred. Fred our, yeah, our, our Fred. And um, people are being critical of him, and I've seen people being critical of Sabitzer, and I think that you know both takes are, are poor. I think Fred's been really good for us this season alongside Casemiro in his preferred role, and then I think the problem we've got with it with with both games against Leeds now is that it's so obvious that Sabitzer and Fred want to occupy the same area. They want to occupy the exact same role. They both want to be progressive um, eights. They, they both love a challenge, but that does not mean that they're a six. Do you know what I mean? That does not mean that they can sit as a defensive midfielder in the base of a midfield three. And um, so I think that's one of the things that we saw today is that we got overrun quite a lot in midfield. I think that's why Malassi were inverted and dropped in there at times, just to give them a little bit more of a hand. Um, I don't think we'll have that problem when Casemiro is back. I think they can both rotate. They can both play next to Casemiro and he'll do most of the defensive screening. And then we've got good ball progressive box to box midfielders in both of them. So, but all in all, um, we got, we got, we got three points away at Ellen road and, you know, four points from six um, against, uh, you know, weirdly a manager, managerless leads that have got a new manager bounce, even though they don't have a new manager and they look like a decent side. You know, I don't know what Jesse Marsh was doing, man, but that lead side were, were good. They were well drilled. They knew what they wanted to do. And I obviously had, had, had to test leads, but, you know, you, you sort of, a neutral would feel bad for them because they probably deserved something from that game. But at the end of the day, we had the difference makers. Rashford is in the form of his life. Like there mm. probably isn't a more informed player in world football at the minute. No. Um, no, nine and goals what, since uh, the World Cup now, and he tops that list out of the top five leagues. Yeah, mad in it. Like he scored eight in his last nine. You know, he's now scored but again four uh, Premier League games on the bounce. Um, and I think we're seeing a really nice transition for him. Where you know the, the conversation has always been, oh, he's only really effective in that left half space, like coming in from the left-hand side. But I think we're now seeing the transition to him being able to play as a centre-forward, which is, is really good for his development. It's good for us as a team. You've constantly had this issue of how do we get Anthony and Sancho in, Rashford in, you know, Garnacho, all these all these exciting wingers that we want to play. You know, how do you fit them all in? Rashford being able to play at centre-forward these days helps us a little bit with that problem. Um, and obviously Garnacho, man, some boy. What a way to respond to... The nonsense again. I won't talk. I won't talk about it. Do you know what I mean? But the, the nonsense that comes out from certain people who thrive on negativity. Do you know what I mean? Like we used to bully AFTV for doing the exact same thing, yeah. um, and it's, but it's become profitable. It's a good way to generate, um, you know, media traffic and things like that. So people do it. But honestly, man, idiots, absolute idiots. And Garnacho showed that. Mm-hmm. You know, he played what sixteen minutes or whatever it or whatever it was. Um, yeah. I don't know the full 20, time. 20-something, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And look look how direct he was. Look, he made the difference. Um, and, you know, it'll it, it, it be buzzing with that. So, all in all, decent decent Sunday. Um, mm. We made more of it than we should have. Though. Sorry, that was a bit long-winded, but I hope I covered yeah. a lot of points It was there. very long-winded, mate. And I might not have to come back to you again, to answer, but um, no, thanks very much, mate. Uh, I'll get yeah. Out of you. Big, big, big. Uh, he's becoming a bit of a game changer himself, Garn, actually. You know, you don't want to be labelled with that, but he's, uh, you know, come on. Uh, on numerous occasions uh, or, you know, started and, and really does sort of uh, bring up in the big moments. And, uh, and obviously it was a great finish today in off the post. Uh, that's what you like to see. And, uh, and Rashford yet again with another header, uh, which we're seeing more and more of uh, from him. You know, we, if you take yourself back about four four years ago, he was doing exactly the same then and uh, and a bit more so at least. So, yeah, great, uh, great summary there, buddy. Um, and uh, yeah, very much so. Um do you think it was lost in the defence then? Obviously, Jamie was talking about the, the first transition, uh, Keane. Uh, but I feel like uh, in the midfield, we weren't able to sort of dominate either. And, and really, you know, once we did get out of the defensive sort of uh, uh, two, it was really difficult to then push it forward into the midfield. But what were your thoughts on that? I thought we we, we let it go a lot of loose balls in that first half. Um, obviously, due to the fact that I think that the, the defence... Didn't get the ball out quick enough out, out of the back four. And then obviously anytime Fred or Sabitza got the ball, they were getting pressed and leads. We're doing very well with that kind of four man press at, at, at in their first phase. Um and yeah, like I think McKinney and Adams done very well to negate uh, Sabitza and Fred in the first half. But we've seen again, like the minute Martinez came on, I think he's making them line breaking passes, though Sabitza moved out a bit more wide, though kind of in, in almost kind of a, a kind of wide right role. And you know, we we've seen kind of more triangles being played. We've seen a bit more control. Um, though obviously in the second half of the game, but yeah, like I think in that first half we were deliberating on the ball way too much. And I think when you, especially the fact we went kind of almost with a back three, um, it kind of you know, defeated the purpose of it. But look, I I said this during the game. I I feel like 
the fact that you have like Casemiro and Ericsson both out of the team right now, you, you can see the loss in there in terms of controlling the game. And it just shows the drop off we have um, when them two aren't playing. Um, now, Sabitza and Fred, like, like Jamie said, it's almost like it's a more polished version of what McFred was because um, they're literally both trying to do the same job um, at the minute and they're kind of getting each other's way. It's kind of square pegs around holes. But look, once Casemiro comes back into the team, look, I think you'll see either one of them beside him um, for the rest yeah, of the season. We- which isn't really fair on Sabitzer. I think there's so much quality there. You know, I still think he's a little bit unfit. Um, he's, yeah. He can read the game really well. And, and it isn't fair on him because I think when you have someone like Casemiro, you know, you see that, that uh, improvement the organization on Fred. Would be different. The shape would be different. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you've seen that improvement on Fred, right? Uh, and, and as soon as they sort of drop back a little bit and, and Sabitzer's not been given a fair whip, a crack of the whip yet, uh, you know, it's, it, it obviously does disjoint uh, a lot of things. And yeah, I mean, Casemiro now is out for how many games was it in total? Was it five or three? Leicester. Leicester is the last one next weekend. Oh, right. Okay. So he's back he's for back Newcastle. Point. Yeah. Oh, no. Newcastle's certainly kept a fish in it. And um, I thought it was a Premier League game for a minute, but I didn't read it properly. My mistake. Uh, and then obviously West Ham on the 1st of March. So, he's, so that's when he returns. Uh, yeah. The quicker he returns, obviously, uh, the better. Um, what did everyone make of uh, Jaden's performance today? First 60 minutes in a long time, start the game. Uh, obviously, start the game for the first time in a long time. Uh, how do you think he fared, Jamie? I think he did all right. Um, you know, he's, he's it's a tricky one. He's, he's playing out outright. He's not really got any sort of <clears throat> runners in next to him or behind him, So, which is where, which is one of the things he thrives off. Um, but I think he, he did well to sort of retain the ball, um, to hold the ball up. Um, and when when we were as disjointed as we were when he was on the pitch, I don't think it's necessarily a fair reflection of his ability. Um, you know, I think everyone was poor for the first seventy minutes. Um, we, I was talking to my mates uh, when um, one of them said about Fred being man of the match, and I was just like, realistically, who deserves man of the match out of all of them? Like, um, we we were shocking. Um, so I think Sancho did well. I don't think any of any of us played particularly well, but again, it's yeah. frustrating. And I, I've said this on this channel loads of times. Is that and it's one of the same things with Anthony, um, is that we need to have a dynamic runner down that right hand side to, to to provide whoever our right wing outlet is with an option to either drag the fullback or to, to you know to, to maybe play a um, a pass out wide and, and and move into space. Um, the last couple of cameos Sam, Sancho's made when he's played at, played in the ten, he's looked mm-hmm. good because he's on the ball. He's not having to beat people with pace or anything like that. He's not having to drive to the byline. He can just sort of float around and I think that's where he's positive so I think it, it was encouraging I'm, I'm glad to see how Ten Hag's using him at the minute he's bringing him back in quite well and um, you know he, he, the fact he bagged a goal at OT the other night was uh, was great for his confidence um, and a fully fit Sancho is is a problem for for people you know not for us um, so it is, it's good and again Ellen Road's not an easy place to go um, you know the, Le- the Leeds were up the Leeds were up for it Um Furpo, the only thing I will will say is that Furpo getting booked in that foot, uh, sort of opening twenty minutes, I would have liked to have seen us do more, do more with that. And yeah. and also one of the most enjoyable things of the game was when I don't know if anyone else noticed this is the the Manchester United Twitter admin clearly forgot to switch accounts back to their personal because they were retweeting Danny Higginbottom, um, talking about how Furpo was on a yellow card. Let's get at him. I was like, it's an interesting one, but I agreed with the yeah. point. I would I would have liked to have seen us be a bit more dynamic and to to overload Furpo and try and. You know whether he can get him on a second yellow, force force leads into the change or, or whatever. We didn't really exploit that, that much, but again, at the end of the day, the tactical changes were were spot on. Um, when when they happened, uh, Malasia probably a little bit unlucky to be the one that was hooked because I think Malasia had a decent game today. He yeah, tried and tried I and tried. He was good. Yeah, he was um, good. You know, some of it, some of it was a tricky character, and I think he dealt with him quite well. Um, he stopped us going one 0 down when he managed to put that you know just just the right amount of pressure on. Um, but yeah, look, it, 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 these are the games where under Ranjik, you know, and even towards the end of Solskjaer's tenure, these are the games where I don't think we would have got anything. I think we'd have yeah, been dominated and probably would have gone 1-0 down and then heads down. Same with a game at OT the other day. Um, we go 2-0 down under Ranjik or under Solskjaer towards the end and it finishes, you know, 3-4-0. Um, but this this team's got character. This team's got fight in it. And um, it's one of those that, you know, Ten Hag, like that comment just said then, Ten Hag got to be delighted, um, and you know a bit more recruitment in the summer. Obviously, we need to see what happens with the sale of the club, but some more recruitment um, in the summer, so that when we do have suspensions, when we do have injuries, when we need to rotate, 
we don't have square pegs and round holes, you know, keen spot on, spot, spot on with that. But yeah, I think Sancho, to go back to your original point, he, he, he didn't do much wrong. Um, he was all right. Yeah, he was all right. Um, we we'll hopefully kick on from that going forward. I uh, just want to read a couple of things out, actually. Um, Keane's, uh, thank you, mate, put this in there. Today was uh, David De Gea's 180th clean sheet for the club, uh, equal and Peter Schmeichel's record. Absolute um, mammoth, that is. And uh, one second. Sorry. Uh, joint statement from United and Leeds. Both clubs strongly condemned chants from both sets of fans regarding historic tragedies at today's game. Uh, such behaviour is completely unacceptable and we will continue to work with our respective fan groups in the Premier League and other authorities on eradicating it from football. I um, understand, obviously, uh, rivalries uh, can, can kind of point towards that, but when it comes to big things like that, that's certainly something that can't happen and, and none of us on the panel or anyone at this channel will condemn that in any way, shape or form from any club. Uh, so just wanted to move on to that quickly. Say that. Um, I'll come to some to some comments in a minute. Uh, Maguire has been talking after the game, David De Gea as well, and Eric Ten Hag too. Um, you both kind of picked up on it today. Uh, Vekor has been dropped back to the number 10. Now, the way I see it for a striker of his calibre and his attributes, he's not necessarily fast, so it doesn't really give him that option. But, you know, when you're only playing one up top, i.e. him, it's very difficult. And that's why we see it with Martial sometimes. But Martial's got a little bit more uh, better uh, gravity about him uh, and can sort of turn players, has a bit more pace, can do a little bit more from that side of things. But do you think that obviously benefited him today then, Keane? Um, and, and and is that because he's, he's, he's able to then receive it further down the pitch and, and progress it from there? Yeah, he definitely made a difference because he was giving and going. Like he, he he'd take one touch and he'd be back out, bang out to Luke Shaw, bang out to Dallow, and then it was bringing Fernandez into play a bit more as well. Um, you know, towards towards the end of the game, so it was a good, it was a good, I suppose, tactical t- tweak from Eric Ten Hag. I know Shane pointed out in the group chat, and he was like, "Whoa, like Vegas has gone into the ten. What's going on?" Um, which look even I thought originally when he made the change, I was like, "Fuck, he's going four four two. He's going Rashford and Vegas, and we're going Route One." That's what I thought was going to happen. Um, but no, look, he dropped in. He done well. Um, now personally, I don't see it as a, <laughs> a long-term role going forward. But in, in a game like this, where it's, there's a bit of a physical battle in midfield, I think Ten Hag was very... As, as I, I think that he showed good tactical nows by, do, by putting him in there to kind of gate leads his physical threat as well. Um, and the likes of McKinney and stuff like that didn't get on the ball as much when um, Beghorst went in there. Yeah, absolutely right. And uh, just to everyone in the comments as well, all, all familiar faces, we really appreciate you coming back. Make sure you like it and subscribe and really appreciate it. And loads of you on Twitter, um, come over to youtube.com forward slash weekly armchair sports talk. We want to see your comments. Can't see them on there. We want to talk about those, as I say all the time. So come on over. Uh, yeah, absolutely spot on there. And, uh, and, and maybe that sort of gives him a little bit more of an outlet. I was surprised to see him start today, um, particularly with the performance in midweek. I thought that you might see Rashford up top. Um, and uh, and potentially sort of wake horse uh, drop into the bench, uh, but that obviously didn't happen. Um, I just wanted to get your opinions quickly on on the midfield for the next game. You know, we got Leicester who picked up a four one win yesterday. Seems to be on a little bit of a surge. You know, even if it's not uh, as as big as as that sort of thing. But who do we start in that midfield now? Um, do we does he keep going with the way that he is? I know we don't really have those options. What about if McTominay comes back? What do we do? Do we just sort of make do until Casemiro comes back? Because I think that's going to be a tough game, and I think that's points we should be getting if I'm honest. Jamie. I think okay. Right, Jamie, yeah, you go first. Yeah, work away. I think it, yeah, it's an, it's an interesting one because obviously Leicester do on paper have a really good midfield, and that's a, that's a battle that without Casemiro we're going to struggle um, to really get a grip on. I think the the result yesterday is probably a, a little bit of a um, what was a bit of an anomaly. An um, enigma, I, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen Leicester play well consistently over the course of this um, season so far. Um, I personally don't think that Rodgers is that good of a manager. This is all going to come back to bite me a hundred percent. By the way, by saying this, but Leicester are a good side. Do you know what I mean? I do think that Leicester are a good side. They've just been in poor form and they're not playing well. Um, I think, you know, when you've got the likes of Tielemans, who you don't know whether he's staying or going, that, that probably has an impact on the squad. Um, and the recruitment hasn't been great. Whereas previously, I've always praised Leicester for having such a strong recruitment department. I just think that over the last 12 months, it seems to have dropped off a little bit. Um, but, you know, people get things wrong. But I think 
it's, it's been interesting because obviously the last couple of games, we didn't, we didn't see it today. I thought we might at some point. But the last couple of games, you've seen Lindelof making little cameos in the six. Um, he's come on. So I don't know whether or not Ten Hag's been trialling that to see what the crack is for a game like Leicester, where we might need a bit more balance in midfield. I think Sabitzer and Fred, we can get away with a little bit in a game against Leeds where it's going to be chaotic. It's going to be fiery yeah, um, yeah. and everyone's everyone going to be pumped up. But against a team probably, that have... Probably why McTominay does so bloody well against them every time, because it is very much yeah. like that. It's more about exactly. tenacity, closing it down, winning it back kind of thing, yeah, rather yeah, than you just... really having to dictate from the middle. Yeah, you throw a little bit of chaos in the mix in a game like that and you sort of get away with it. Like, De- Leeds-, Leeds midfield was chaotic. Do you know what I mean? Like, Weston McKennie and Tyler Adams together is a, is a fun combination um, of, of footballers. They both really want to win that ball back constantly. And we've seen that in both games. Um, that, you know, the amount of times that they could have both been booked across the um, the course of the two games. So I think against Leicester, where they've got more of an experienced midfield that are used to playing with each other, um, Madison's obviously back from injury. He's he's playing well again. Um, they're a threat. So we might see Lindelof come in at the six. That'd be, uh, and, and I think that that's probably one of the reasons why Tanag has been trialling in there and doing it, giving him his little cameos just to see what, what it would look like. I wouldn't surprise me if that's how we're training at the minute. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't be rushing... Because if we had a midfield three, for example, of like McTominay, Sabitzer, and Fred, I think that that is that's that's chaotic. Like, mm-hmm. but like too chaotic. And um, so I think we will see an actual you know, somebody sitting in the six, um, and we might see Bruno. Out wide. It depends whether Anthony's back as well. You know, we've seen again over these last two games the importance Anthony had plays in this side, the, yeah, yeah. the 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 structure and the discipline that he gives us on that right hand side, and the options that he gives us. Um, he, he works really. He's been working really well with Wambasaka over the last few weeks in terms of um, you know stopping the counter attacks um, and and again they're both developing and we've said it multiple times that they are developing that partnership and it's been looking good so um, the midfield is going to be an interesting one and I think that that's where that game is going to be going to be won or lost for us so it'll be important to see you know what we work on in training this week um, and it, like I say it wouldn't surprise me if we see a more recognised six role being undertaken in that in that game. Yeah, absolutely right. It's very, very fortunate, really, that we have got uh, the likes of Casemiro uh, that can play against Barcelona next week. Is it now? Next do you know? Thursday? Do you know that as well, Mark? I think mm. like Jamie hit hit the, hit the nail on the head as well, like that midfield, because you ought to have taken into account we've two Barcelona games in between that. Yeah. So, like, I think f- we need Fred's energy. I think against Barcelona in terms of winning the ball back in beside Casemiro. So, um, I think Casemiro and Fred will be the preferred partnership against them. I really do. Um, yeah, just because of their aggressive nature, I think they, they and they both have an understanding. Um, I think Savitza, I think that you rightly mentioned that he's not not a sharp. I think Barcelona would not be the game to play him. Um, yeah. so like, look, I think having Fred in there like Casemiro will work. But like, I think Jamie had it might be onto something. Maybe playing like if against Leicester, playing Lindelof, Savitza, and probably Bruno Fernandez in front. Yeah. So Savitza can be more of an eight, and if Fernandez, let him be a ten. Just let him just float in that ten role against them um, yeah. but yeah it's interesting because again you have Jaden Sancho there as well who can also play number 10 could we go something like for maybe more stability in midfield could you go maybe Sancho on the 10 Fernandez out on the right like we've seen in the second half um, against Leeds um, the other day so like there, there's so many different combinations we can use but I think we saw, saw that a bit today as well didn't we um, yeah. we went over to the right hand side and uh, at the beginning of the season, when we saw it a couple of times, I think we were all very up in the area. We weren't sure if it was working, but it's kind of worked as as time's gone on, really, isn't it? Yeah, I think everyone should remember, every time Bruno got sent out on the right-hand side, I was going off my head, saying, why are you putting him out on the right? But he's actually looking, yeah. Ten Hag yeah. has proved me wrong um, massively on that one. He's, he's doing a job out there, and I hold my hands up. Um, I'm going to hold that smoke from Ten Hag. Um <laughs> A lot of smoke being held today, isn't there? A lot of smoke yeah, being lot, held. There's a lot of smoke being held today. Um, but look, that's absolutely great to see. But look, I think today, look, in the context of it all, it's a smash and grab. It's three mm. points. Mm. And when you consider the results in the league this weekend, Chelsea dropping points, Liverpool um, yet to play, but they're playing a derby game tomorrow. And then you have the Arsenal dropping points, Tottenham dropping points, City potentially, now look, they're playing now literally in a minute, a couple of minutes' time. Um like, you know, if they drop points, this could be a fantastic weekend for United. So I think mm. Ten Hag's substitutions, when you, when you put it into context of everything that's gone on, is a masterstroke yeah. from today. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, we were criticising him, a lot of us in the group chat at least. Uh, we felt like he wasn't quite on it, but he certainly changed it around with the with the substitutions made, 100%. Um, Martinez, I want to come to you about that. And Kia, you keen about that? Fucking hell, honestly, all over the place. I've only had one drink, my first drink. <laughs> uh, Lysandro Martinez in 29 minutes versus Leeds. Uh, 29 minutes, right? 88% pass accuracy, 38 touches, um, 34 passes completed, three tackles won, three ground duels won, two out of three long balls completed and two ball recoveries. That's insane, isn't it? He, he's just, I love him. And and I think it was absolutely evidence today. But go on, Kane, talk to me about him a little bit more. Oh, he was top. Like, you can see the composure he brought to the team the minute he came on the pitch. Like, you see the likes of Shaw calm down, Maguire even to an extent calm down. Um, and then we've seen Fred being brought into the game much more because Lissandra Martinez is there to distribute. Um, and yeah, uh, our good friend um, Spitty from Liverpool um, admitted he was wrong the other day as well. So look, he, 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 he's a top, top player. He's top, top professional. And it's just refreshing to, to, ha- to have that type of Rolls Royce defender um, in, our, in our back four right now. And, it's something that we've been lacking since Rio and Village left. Village, and I know we've yeah, had Daily Blind, Daily Blind done okay there, but like we have the full package of Martinez. He can be aggressive. He can be that Rolls Royce. He can be, you know, I think genuinely he's a, he's a complete defender because even for his height, yeah, he's brilliant in the air as well. I, I genuinely think he's a complete defender. And again, as always, it's tradition now when me, Mark, and Jamie are on the same show and Martinez has a good game. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I just... I, I, <laughs> <laughs> every time every time you know what I, I do apologize you know we do, do talk about the same things but sometimes you know when i just going through some stats and stuff i wanted to kind of pull it up but you, you can't you know as what as much as we can critique and go in and whatever and you know you want to talk about even the little cameos for 29 minutes and he's a hugely hugely important player for us another uh Hugely player, uh, important player for us. Uh, played the centre back a few times this season. Uh, probably going to play centre back against Barcelona as well. I would have thought Luke Shaw. Um, and I'll come to you on him in a minute, Jamie. Just quick, uh, a few things for you first. Um, Eighty-eight touches, seventy-nine percent pass accuracy. I can't get my words out, bro. Uh, eight ground duels won, six ball recoveries, three clearances, three blocks, three two key passes, two air duels won, two out of three dribbles completed, one interception, one big chance created, one assist. Fucking hell, man. Go on. Yeah, he was mint again. Um, I've said this quite a few times, is that, you know, he's back to being, you know, arguably the best left back. So it's a good league. Luke Shaw to watch, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, we've had, our, um, we've had our, our little issues with him and stuff in the past. And we've always said that it, he does need somebody pushing him in the squad to get the best out of him. You know, that brief period where we first signed Alex Tellers he, and Luke Shaw decided again he, he wanted to play football. Um, we brought Malassia in and again, he's back to his best. Um, so I don't know whether it, it's to do with Ten Hag's management or whether, again, he just loves having that bit of competition. But he's been the best left back in the league um, this season. And I don't even think that's up for debate. Like, granted, the talent pool's shrunk a little bit. You know, Cancelo's left now and he was poor. Zinchenko's been out injured quite a lot. Um, Liverpool have been shocking, you know, so there's not really been much competition for him. But he is, he is phenomenal. He's back to his best. And I think it might be the best form we've seen him in. Um, it's yeah. reminiscent of when he first started to build that partnership with Memphis Depay before the injury. Yeah, yeah the leg. Um, yeah, it, yeah it, it's that fearlessness of him wanting to get down that left hand side and, and mm. provide an attacking outlet for us. And we saw that with the chance that he created for Marcus. I um, mean, that ball could not have been put more on a plate. And obviously, Rashford's decided to add headed goals to his uh, to his Arsenal now as well. And um, so he is turning into a you know a complete forward. Um, so yeah, look, the fact that Shaw can play in either of those two spots, I think, is massive for Ten Hag. Especially, you know, with with Martinez being out for the Barcelona game, we we need we need to have a good left footed, left sided centre half who can progress the ball. Um, it's one thing that you know Varane is a phenomenal defender, mm-hmm. but playing Varane next to, um, you know, if we were to play him next to Maguire, I think we we instantly lose that ball playing transitional um, ability that we have when Martinez is on the pitch. And um, so I think that. Varan and Shaw when Martinez is out it's probably our best centre-half partnership yeah, that we have at the, yeah. at the minute so yeah it wouldn't surprise me if we seen for Barca but you, you know again he was he was a monster today um, mm. he, he frustrated Leeds he made that switch to left-back so flawlessly as well when we brought Malassia off um, he, he carried out his instructions perfectly and again you, you watch how he creates that space for himself and delivers that ball in for Marx's goal like he's unplayable you know when he's in this sort of form he is, he is unplayable and for me like team of the season 
has, it has the, that yeah, left back spot so. is, 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 is his lockdown. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's also not sleep on that cross uh, to Marcus Rashford. Fucking hell. Amazing. Yeah, that's what I mean. Inch perfect. He, couldn't, he, he could not have put that on more of a plate. Um, and I think that's one thing that we were potentially missing. I mean, granted, again, we didn't create anything in the first 60 minutes, realistically, apart from that, you know, that Bruno chance that he should have put away. Um, but as soon as as soon as soon Shaw went out to left-back, you see that we create more down that left-hand side. He has a really good understanding of what Rashford's going to do. Um, those two have ha, have a mint link up. They have a wicked partnership. They, do. They, do. Um, they did three years ago as well. We saw so yeah. much. You remember the green... Uh, sorry, I didn't even mean to say his name, but that one with him... Uh, Marcel yeah. and Rashford at sort of the beginning of Ollie's reign. Uh, the partnership exactly. on that left-hand side was unbelievable. Exactly. And when you've got, you know, Rashford drifting over into the centre-forward role, Garnacho's undercutting as well, and, and, he, and he's trying to play in that same area. And then you've got Luke Shaw. You know, that's a triangle of really attacking direct intent. Like, it's exciting to watch. And that's where we're going to get a lot of joy throughout the rest of the season. Um, so, yeah, probably Shaw probably was my man of the match in the end. Um, on a on a day where we could have easily lost, you know, two three nil if they'd have taken a chances to be talking about the fact that you know he probably put in about an eight out of ten performance. I think he did his centre half roles um, really well. Um, he wasn't at fault for sort of any of the defensive errors that we were making. Um, and then of course when he switched over to left, he created the opportunity for the first goal, and that's what then changed the game for us in that last 10, 15 minutes. So he would have been my man of the match as well. Yeah, absolutely agree. I'm just going to uh, read you something that I think you'll both like and uh, and certainly everyone in the comments will as well. Uh, Alejandro Garnacho has been directly involved in more goals as a substitute than any other player in the Premier League this season. Nice. Right, let's more move luck. on then. So, David De Gea, we're going to do ratings now. I want everyone to get involved, all you lot in the comments as well, and those of you on Twitter to come over to YouTube so we can see those comments and uh, and go through them together. Because that's nice on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, yeah, David De Gea, Keane, you first, buddy. I give David De Gea, part of my look, his distribution today was, was was not great at all, but he did pull off a couple of good saves um, to keep us in the game. Um, and there was there was one in particular it was with, with Summerhill that he, he saved with his feet. Yeah, with his like, foot. He's done really, really well. Um, I give David De Gea a seven today. Because um, I did, he did, like, you know, for, for his saves, I think for keeping us in the game and keeping a clean sheet, I'd give him a seven. Now, look, I know Jamie's mad to laugh there, but he doesn't make them saves. We don't let me just let me just get the popcorn. Hang on, top four race. Um, so if that, I, I give him a seven anyway because I think you give him a six on, on, on keeping the clean sheet and making vital saves. I think I, I do agree. Actually, I do. I do agree with you. I, I understand Jamie's face, and initially I was thinking actually maybe it's a bit too generous, but he kept us in the game, made some great just, saves, and kept kept clean sheet as you said. Just on that, I wasn't. I wasn't going to laugh. You know. You know. I, I love your opinions and I love your football in brain. Keen. I was not going to laugh. It was more me going, "What can I like? Maybe I am a bit harsh." Um, <laughs> do you know, so, do you know so, what I mean? So you're the problem, not Keen. I see. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I mean. Mark, let's be honest. When do I ever be like, like you know, praising David here? When do I actually ever? No, I agree. You know, no, I be agree. generous with him. <laughs> it's very rare these days. Yeah. No, I, I agree. With, I agree with everything you said, and I think uh, six or seven from anyone, I couldn't disagree with you. But yeah. I think he, he he did some lots of things today to really give him the seven. I think so. I, I can't disagree with you. Um, right, moving on to Diogo Dallo, um, Jamie. I gave him a four. I think I was really disappointed with him today. Um, yeah, me too. I, I don't know whether he's still, you know, nursing a bit of a, a bit of a knock, and you know, and, and again, I want to be patient with him while he while he works his way back into full fitness because um, he was he was fantastic before the injury. He was fantastic at the World Cup for Portugal, um, and he really looked to have that right back spot nailed down. But I think um, he's been quite poor the last two times I've watched him, um, and today he just didn't really seem to want to get to, to get at leads. I really thought he was going to be picking the ball up and want to just make runs and, and try and get down their left, their defensive left hand side, but he just didn't really want to do that. He did, I didn't see him progress the ball much. I think he was quite shaky. Um, and again, don't get me wrong, like that Wilfred Nonto is some player. Like he is, he is a boy. Um, so I can imagine, you know, it, it was tricky for Diogo to have to defend against him. Um, but I would have liked to have seen him put a little bit more pressure on their um, on their defensive oh, left side. Um, but. Yeah, um, I'd probably give him a four. Yeah, I, I state, think he was poor today. Don't talk about goalkeepers for a second. The absolute state of Martinez for that for City's goal there. My God. He scored already? 
Yeah, yeah. Well, Rodri scored? scored from a corner. Who did? Rodri. Rodri. Oh, fuck Rodri. Harlan is all right. Other than that, I want them to lose. Um, all right, moving on to Harry Maguire then. Um, King. Give him a six. I think we can maybe give him a five, maybe. But he kept again kept a clean sheet. Made a few. I suppose in the air, he was actually brilliant today. Like from an aerial standpoint, I think Maguire did win a good few duels up there and um, with Bamford. But again, nothing major. He just done his job. I think just a steady Eddie six. Yeah, I think you're right. And uh, good comment here, actually. Uh, one thing I noticed is David De Gea is back to his whole sloppy distribution. Uh, Jamie um, perfectly summed this up earlier with Maguire on the field. Um, it doesn't really, th- th- there's not a quick enough transition at least and therefore they could kind of pass it side to side and back to the keeper again. And of course he's, he's forced to go long. I don't think that's his fault. We know his distribution shit, but he's forced into that position a lot of times today. Um, but yeah, fair points, Keen on Maguire. Uh, Luke Shaw then, I give you him, Jamie. I know you've always spoken to him, I've spoken about it, but just give me a rating and anything else you want to add. Uh, probably an 8 out of 10. Um like I say, to, to, to fulfil both roles that he did today against Leeds yeah, um, away yeah. at, Ellen Road, at Ellen Road, and he did them both flawlessly, I think. Um, so, yeah, solid 8 out of 10, man of the match for me. Yeah, absolutely spot on. I think he was superb uh, and good to see that. And as you say, I mean, to go from one position to another, it, is, uh, it takes some doing. I think he did that flawlessly, as you said. Um, so, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Plus, I've got Luke Shaw and uh, Rashford in my uh, fantasy team, so that's nice. Nice yeah. for me. Uh, anyway, right, moving on to Malassia. Um, King. He didn't do, do too bad, but he didn't do great either. But one thing I did like about him was the fact he was up for today and his aggression was there and yeah, his tackling yeah. was good. Um, look, I think we know going forward, he probably still lacks a bit to be to, to, to be desired. But look, he's he's still young, he's still developing. And look, I think from a defensive point of view, he's actually quite good. So I'll give him a 6.5 um, on that thing. He's actually, I, I'm surprised he even stayed on the pitch. But the, like the, the collision with his head that he took onto the ground, yeah, he that, really that, that, that looked really rough. There. The missus, right? She, she, um, she, bless her, reads a book when football's on. And honestly, I've never known someone to not have any interest whatsoever. It's it's hard work getting getting her to watch England. Uh, but she saw that moment and uh, and she made a comment so that means something. But yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, he didn't do himself more damage, but listen, I, we've we've spoken about him so many times. I really am excited by him, and and I will I will stay on that train until you know either he tells tell, tells me not to. But I think he he works hard, um, and uh, he likes going forward. I think he you know he likes tucking into that inside a little bit um, in the midfield, which is quite nice to see. I think he's actually very good on the ball, and out and off the ball too, and uh, defensively, as you said, very very good. Um, Let's move on to Fred, uh, Jamie. See, I'm going to give him. I'm going to give him a seven here. Right, he picked up a booking dead early, and I think Fred last season would have gone off. Do you know what I mean? Like he would have been, he would have been sent off. Um, so I think that for so, as so we're that giving sound, sevens out for either keeping us in the game or not getting sent off. Is that how we're working? Yeah. <laughs> Genuinely, just just right. If Keane can give De Gea a seven, I can give okay, Fred a seven. Okay, okay. I think um, Fred was very good in the second half, though. I think he was very. He like, was much better. Yeah, but he was winning but, but, second what, balls. He was aggressive, and yeah, like I think it's fair to give him a seven. Now, if you're if you're, if you're doing half and half, first half you probably give him a five. Second half you definitely give him a seven, like one hundred percent. Yeah, and and like I say, I just think that yeah, that's probably a daft reason. And I said that you know because he didn't get sent off. But it's just nice to see that level of composure from I, him I see, that he I didn't sit necessarily here, have. I, I sit here and watch you laughing at everyone else, Jamie. So I thought I'd. Uh, <laughs> I don't laugh at everyone else at all. It, he's going to say just you know, there's certain ones sometimes. But no, um, I just think I think he was he was pretty solid. He did well. He was overrun at times, and he kept a, he kept his head, um, and he made some quite important challenges. And again, in transition, he's becoming you know much more astute. Um, and I think that the player that we've seen him become when Casemiro's next to him, he still maintains some of that when he's out. I've seen people talk, yeah. talking about, you know, he, he needs to go in the summer and things like that. And I, and I was so critical of Fred 12 to 18 months ago. Um, that was because he was playing in a pivot alongside Scott. Whereas now, because he's been playing next to the best defensive midfielder in the world, he's been able to just be an eight and, and actively play as he wants to play. And, and yeah. I think that that carried over a, a bit today. So yeah, for me, you know, he was, he was, he was good. Yeah. I think that's fair. I think that's summed up really, really well. Um, moving on to Savitsa, uh, King. For, 
I give him a six. I think first half again he was kind of his touches were a bit loose. Um, so he was finding it hard to get into the game. But second half again he was better. His switch to Luke Shaw, which I, I think we actually haven't highlighted once on the pod. Um, his switch to Luke Shaw was lovely. Um, in the second half for, to enable Shaw to get that assist. Um, it's funny we mentioned Fred a couple of seconds before that. I was hoping Fred would open up his body to release Shaw on the left hand side. And then it came back to Sabitza, and then. That was a brilliant, brilliant switch play. Um, yeah. So good distribution Agreed. by him. And look again, I think it, with, with him, it's going to come down to sharpness. Like Matt, the game, like yeah. getting, getting games. Like he, he only played a couple of minutes since November, didn't he? Before he came to United. So like, look, there's, there's time. There's plenty of football. And look, at the rate we're going as a football club right now, we're gonna, be, we're gonna go deep into like, well, we're already in the the Carabao Cup final. I dare to say, like, look, we'll probably go deep into the FA Cup as well. So look, there's gonna be plenty of games for him to to settle in, especially with Ericsson being out. So. Look, I give just, a six. Just, just on that as well. Um, Sab- Sabitz is such a. That's a nice comment, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. a nice I, comment. It stresses me out playing Leicester, though. I swear they always find form when they play us. Do you know what I mean? Madison like, just have a stormer next week now. Yeah, sure. exactly. But, but again, man, the guys are baller. I, I, I but, was gonna, but, I was gonna, just quickly actually. I forgot to say this earlier. Madison, I'd absolutely love it. You know, it. I think. Uh, oh yeah, hundred percent. Rotation with Bruno, he, and, and, he, and he grew up. He grew up supporting United as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like you know, yeah. no disrespect, no disrespect to Leicester. I think, you know, I do like Leicester as a club. I think they're well run, and um, I think you know, at a time when money has been thrown around football, I think Leicester have shown how to do football properly um, but anyway moving back to my point I think with Sabitzer and Fred I think that they're such wicked options to have because obviously when, when our whole midfield's fit you, you really see you probably only play one of them at most you know I don't see them getting in over anyone else in that midfield like as a pair but being able to bring Sabitzer on in a 60th minute mark and bring that energy bring those legs in because you know the, the man's got an energy to that he's got three lungs um, or being able to bring Fred on is such such a nice option to have coming off the bench and I think that like Keane's spot on there with the amount of games we're going to be playing the season you know in theory to be able to have the engine of both of those people because they can run for 90 minutes and not stop do you know what I mean like they're, they're yeah. two of the fittest people I think I've ever seen play for us um, being able to bring one of them on at full fitness in the 60th minute and provide those legs into the midfield will be a massive benefit to us over the course of uh, over the course of the rest of the season yeah, absolutely right. And uh, no problem at all. We like new people coming in, having a little look. Having and a if you are a Leicester fan, by the way, mm. and if you're a Leicester fan, by the way, and you're, and you're, you're comfortable coming on pods, jump on their preview this week as well for the Leicester game, if you're up for it. You'd be there, you go. You have to do, there you go. All you have to do is turn up sometimes, say hello, be nice, and you might get a welcome on the pod. There you go. Yeah. Easy peasy. Go. Uh, right, going forward then, uh, Bruno Fernandes. Uh, who, or well, Kino, you want that, yeah? frustrating today. Um, look, he's been really good the last few weeks, but today he was off the boil. He should have scored. Um, and look, especially when, when he was more central, he, like he was getting phased out of the game. I thought Adam's done a, done a job on him. He's done a really good job on him and didn't give him the time of day on the ball. Um, I'll give Bruno five today. Um, just based off that first half, I thought he was really bad. Should have scored. Um, second half, look, when he got on the ball on the right-hand side, he was a bit better, but um, I think Bruno, today was one of Bruno's poorer games in the last few weeks, so I go, I give Bruno a five. Yeah, I think um, oh, he's, he's so one minute he's incredible, and other moments he's he's just it wasn't his game today, and I think we've seen a few more of that recently. But um, yeah, really, really poor. He should be finishing that chance really. Uh, I think he probably in, ended up taking taking it too close to Melio in the end. Didn't need to go yeah. so close, but. Um, yeah, very, very mixed bag today. First half was really poor, much, much better coming out on the right-hand side and hopefully he starts to pick up in the middle a little bit more going forward. We're going to need him, uh, that's for sure. Uh, right, moving on to, you already spoke about Jaden, so I'm not going to ask you. I asked you on um, Rashford today, Jamie. Yeah, I think he was um, <clears throat> He was probably quite frustrating in the first half. I don't know what it's been about these last two games, but Luke Aylin has just turned into a different class of right-back. Um I was honestly, man, at Old Trafford on Wednesday, I was screaming. Like, the guy the guy was stressing me out. Do you know what I mean? Like, every time Garnacho tried to get past him, and I was just constantly sat there. It was Thursday. Lost track of my days, you know what I mean? Um, every time he, he has one of our wingers seem to try and make direct runs past him, he just has this burst of pace, and he's just he reads the game so well. Do you know what I mean? So, as much as as much as much I dislike the man's pace for Leeds, you know, this is a bit of a Luke Aylin appreciation moment. Like, the, the, that he was a phenomenal fullback against us in both games. Um, but as soon as Rashford obviously makes that transition from playing as an inside left forward to playing centre forward, I think that 
changes Rashford's game a little bit. Um, I think the goal saved him um, today from getting a bit of a um, weak rating. But, you know, the form that he's in, that's what you want him to do. You know, he, he can stay quiet for 80 minutes if he's popping up with goals like that every week. And if he continues at this run of scoring form, um, you know, I've just seen I've just seen a thing from Statman Dave talking about his 2023 form and it is, it is it's absolutely crazy. So let the kid do what he wants to do. Eric Ten Hag has, has, has just got his number. He, he knows exactly what he wants to do with Rashford and yeah. he's becoming he's becoming the player that we all knew that he would. Everyone that slagged him off, you know, people were calling him Welbeck 2.0 and stuff like that and people were saying that he wasn't good enough for Manchester United. All of egg on their chin. Because this man is is just a different different class. I hope he stays at United. Specifically, specifically on their chin. Yeah. yeah, just on their chin. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it's egg on their face is the saying, isn't it? Not egg on their chin. Never mind. You know what? You knew what you knew what I meant. Though. I you tell you what, bro. You are lining them up for me today. Go on. I know. Yeah, he was gonna say you usually big me up all the time. You're here terrorizing me today. Um, yeah. Look, I hope he stays at United for the rest of his career. I hope he never leaves us ever because he's a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal footballer. And anyone that never thought he was just doesn't know football and is a muppet. It's as simple as that. Um, but I'd give Rashford a seven today because he got because he got the goal. Do you know what I mean? Like It was so important that he got that. It was a wicked goal to get. And I think it was his movement and his positioning that created that opportunity alongside Luke Shaw's ball. So seven out of ten for me. Wicked. Yeah, talking about that um, that stat for him just quickly. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten games. In the last ten games, uh, he blanked on two. One of them, he got one goal and two assists. Another one, he got two assists. Another one, he got two goals and then scored in each of the others. Uh, it's, it's quite incredible, really, and uh, absolutely over the moon for him, to be honest, yeah. um, Absolutely over the moon. Uh, right, uh, Jaden Sancho, keen. Give Sancho a 6.5. I think he was tidy. He got us up the pitch in the second half. Sorry, in the first half, when there was, though he gave us a bit of respite um, when we were on, or under the cosh. I think, look... For a 60-minute performance for a player who hasn't played in a couple of months, I think he done all right. Um, he looked good in the ball. I think was, I mean, we've seen in flashes. There is um, something different about him on the ball at the minute since he's come back. You know, even yeah. the little appearance he's had, he, you can see he just looks a little bit more electrifying. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to say yeah, you can see that, the composure he brings to the team, and you can see Mark the composure he brings it brings to the team, and how he like he can bring others into play, but also like his feet are really quick. And like his decision making is very good, but again, with match sharpness and match fitness, I think Jaden's going to be a very, very vital player for us and um, between now and the run in. And um, yeah. like, look, when you look, when you see games like this where look, we, we might have we, we might have as much of the ball as we were used to, and then he he he's a player who can do release a Rashford, he can release so a Garnacho up the pitch, and even bring Bruno into play. So, I think he's yeah. someone who he, he's had his problems, but if we can get him. Just fit, firing, and full of confidence. Like we're going to be a dangerous, dangerous side for anyone in this league and anyone in Europe for that matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. Hopefully we can see more of that. Uh, really, really pleased and proud of him actually coming back. Obviously, all the issues, and uh, hopefully it keeps kicking on. You know, we keep saying this every week, every game, uh, but hopefully that still continues to happen. Right. Um, we'll do Valt course next, uh, Jamie. <laughs> First half, I'd have given him a two. Um, but like he said, you know, like with the game being the game of two halves, I'd have given him a two in the first half and probably like a six in the uh, second. So I'll just balance it out at about five. Um, I think no one expected Begos to come into this team and score 20 goals. Do you know what I mean? Like he wasn't being brought in for that matter, I don't think. Um, I did, however, expect him to be a little bit more of an aerial threat um, and to potentially give us a bit of a different outlet. And so far, it just hasn't clicked for him. His pressing numbers are good, don't get me wrong. And I like what he does off the ball. Um, like he occupies areas quite well um, and he allows a bit more space for our runners. And, and so I do appreciate that side of his game. There was just that one moment that really summed it up where he jumps, the ball's in the midfield and it's in the air and he jumps for the header, misses the first one and then misses the second one. And I'm like, you're about seven foot two, brother. Like, how are you not winning at least one of these headers? But playing in the 10, it was like... I'm a big fan of Marouane Fellaini, me, and I think I've said that on this on this show before. And it was like watching prime Fellaini ball. Do you know what I mean? Trapping trapping the ball, bringing it down, and giving it to more gifted players that you know that are better technically than you is is such a a phenomenal and noble trait of some footballers. Like knowing my job here is to win this ball high in the air, bring it down, and just give it to someone that's yeah. better than me. And he did that quite a few times. Where as soon as he as soon as he dropped into the ten, so uh, I I rated that. Um, but I just would like to see him add a little bit more to his game, whether that is knocking the and ball it, in behind for a runner. So, 
Yeah, it's so difficult to really pinpoint what that extra bit is. Do you know what I mean? Because he hasn't played poorly. Um, there have been yeah. a few times when he when that when he like uh, getting uh, leads in the week when he when he should have really brought that ball down. You know the one that was quite close to the yeah, yeah. in the end. Uh, it's so frustrating, but but you it's, know. I think I think the way we're set up doesn't necessarily play to his talents. He strikes me as somebody that would would work well in like a split striker partnership. Um, being able to bring the ball down for a smaller, nippier, faster striker and play them in behind, I think would work quite well. Um, he was unlucky not to have a goal at the end, um, so I don't want to fully discredit his performance. I'm not having a go at him at all. It's it's one of those that he's still gelling in this team. He's still embedding himself. Um, but yeah, I think the way in which we're utilising him in, him at the minute doesn't necessarily play to his strengths. We look to play the ball in behind and it goes past Weghorst all the time. So rather than playing the ball to Weghorst and letting him do the flick on or letting him trap the ball and play it in behind, we're just sort of missing him in that phase of build-up. The amount of times I saw like Dallo pick the ball up and spray that diagonal pass, trying to go for Rashford, and it's like you've got you you you've got a big target man playing centre forward who can trap that ball, and it gives us a bit more of an option. Use him. So yeah, I don't think it's necessarily his fault. Um, and I think you know as far as loans go, I think he'll do all right and he'll be remembered yeah. fondly. Yeah, absolutely right, absolutely spot on, Jamie. As always, my man. Um, right. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I don't know if you got keen. Do you want to do a rating on Garnacho? Uh, obviously, lots to talk about him recently, but you want to give him a rating? Look, we know Luke Shaw's man the match, right? And I completely wholeheartedly agree with Jamie on that. But just for all intensive purposes, for my like, old buddies over on them, them piss poor channels, I, I'm going to give him just a lovely 10 out of 10. But he's not man the match, but he's getting 10 out of 10 just so they can hold that smoke. And look, they have <laughs> egg in their face. I know we're talking about egg on chain and whatever, egg on face, whatever phrase you want to say. Um, but they literally have egg on their face right now. Um, the fact that a 35-year-old man's abusing an 18-year-old child is just, look, that shows what type of person he is. He lacks balls. He really does. And yeah, look, Garnacho is, is the future of Manchester United. And no Tottenham Hotspur fan that is going to tell us otherwise. You know, because he doesn't support Man United, he's a Tottenham fan. His own brother slipped out and said he was a Tottenham fan. So, yeah, look, Garnacho, absolutely amazing. And uh, yeah, look, Great finish. try more. Great That's finish. all they can do. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, and just to answer this bit, really, uh, can you see this being a platform for some kind of uh, era under uh, Ten Hag? Because he really seems to be coming uh, into his own running smoothly. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, we can all see the massive benefits. You know, we've spoken about this uh, on numerous occasions. You know, all those crazy decisions or non-existent decisions that we may have seen, and certainly under Ralph and maybe sometimes under Oli, um, aren't happening. And, and he can really sort of, he's, he's bringing something great. Now, we still need to get rid of those owners. And, uh, and obviously, with reports coming out over the last couple of weeks and certainly in the last couple of days, I think it is only a matter of uh, time now, TikTok. And, uh, and and I can't wait for that. And and again, as rival fans, you might think, yeah, but you spent money, but there's a load more to it than that. So I uh, can't wait till they, those fuckers are out of the club. Um, and uh, anyway, boys, really appreciate you joining me. Glad you enjoyed it. Glad it was 2-0 in the end. Glad it was another three points. And uh, and yeah, we can have a nice Sunday afternoon creating homemade pizzas. So well, that's what I'm going to be doing anyway. So uh, anyway, listen, we're going to have a preview for you in... Uh, 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 before the next game uh, it'd be nice obviously if the geezer in the comments is on as well make sure you tune into that one and uh, probably a match reaction straight after that from yourself uh, from myself sorry uh, we did so, so yeah, many and... shows this week Mark we have Phil Brown tomorrow Yeah. then course. we will have uh, that's on the takeover by the way so if anyone who wants information on the takeover and mm -hmm. do check that out tomorrow night and also then preview like Mark said for Barcelona that'll be Wednesday night then obviously Thursday night the match reaction and then uh, Friday night and um, we'll have the uh, Le Leicester preview so yeah look plenty of content coming up absolutely spot on brilliant anyway guys enjoy your uh, the rest of your Sunday afternoons and evenings and uh, and we'll see you next time